Welcome to Fresh Off the Boat. My name is Arjun Seth and I run Edbrand. We are a college admissions counseling service based in New Delhi, India. I'm delighted to be uh, chatting with Samar Chavla, a student I've known since 2013, I think, 2013-14. Yeah. And then you went to college in uh, 2015 and to Claremont McKenna, which was not a surprise. It was, see, it, to me, it seemed like a right fit for you, but I don't know. I want to hear from your words, uh, in your, yeah. your words. If you reflect back for five years, uh, do you think it was a good choice? And what is it that worked for you there? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I fit in very well at uh, Claremont. And um, I think the school's personality like fit, fit, well, with, fit uh, well with mine. Um, the reason for that is like as a school, um, they're trying to diversify obviously um, and make it a more holistic student body. But at least at the time when I joined, it was mainly focused on looking at, uh, you know, people with some sort of like, um, you know, leadership aptitude, uh, also usually very social people. And then academically speaking, people with more of like a, you know, economic or government kind of uh, passion or background. So I, I really liked economics. So I think those three things all like um, fit in well with my personality. So I, in hindsight, um, I think it was a great choice, um, you know, for the school I decided to choose. How was it like settling in in a new environment? You grew up, most of your high school years were in Singapore and you went to UWC and then moving to LA, suburban LA, in a consortium college. What was it that you were expecting and how did it actually pan out in the first few months of the semester? Yeah, I mean, I think I fit into college better than most of my friends who went to other schools. I think there were probably three things that help with that. One is that the fact that it's a small liberal arts school, I think made it easier. I think, you know, if you go to a big university, you can kind of get lost and it gets difficult, but because it was a small liberal arts college, I think the kind of individualized attention you get to help you settle in is a lot. And I think that helps. Two, um, many people don't know this, but I think as a percentage of the student body, Claremont McKenna is one of the most international schools in the country. I think it's between, I think that every year obviously ranges, but I think it's between 15 to 20% of its student population is international. So I think that really helped me like, you know, having people that I could relate to. And so there are a lot of Indians, also a lot of people from Singapore and just like, you know, a lot of uh, third culture kids like myself who kind of, you know, been all over the place. So that was really easy. And then finally, I think, um, you know, that was the third thing was the fact that, you know, there was a consortium. So if you ever felt too suffocated at CMT, you had like all the four other schools to also rely on, which which was obviously helpful. Sounds fascinating. How did you sort of find your way through academic choices that you had to make? Did you go decided? And then what happened? Yeah, so unfortunately, my academic choices were limited uh, because of the 3-2 program that I, I like went in knowing I wanted to do. What that program is, is that essentially you do three years at Claremont McKenna and you get a Bachelor of Arts in Economics. And then you do two years at Columbia and get a Bachelor of Arts in Engineering, a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. Uh, and because of uh, the fact that you're getting a Bachelor of Science in Engineering only two years, you have to do a lot of prerequisites to engineering while at Claremont McKenna, along with the fact that you have to complete a whole economics degree at Claremont and then do all the liberal arts requirements. So I didn't really have much scope to like figure out what classes I you know, thought could have been cool. But that being said, the liberal arts part really allowed me to like, you know, take different classes. Like I took a religious studies class, a philosophy class, which was cool. Um, and then when it came to the 3-2 program itself, I always knew from high school, I wanted to study both economics and engineering. And that's because like I did the IB and uh, my higher levels were math, physics, economics, and further math. And then I did SL Chem. So I think that lent in very well with this economics and engineering focus. So I actually edited to Penn for the MNT Jerome Fisher program because that is essentially the 3-2 program, but in four years. Um, and then uh, I didn't get in. Uh, so then I thought that this was the next best choice. But in hindsight, I think the five years definitely helped and also getting the difference of like a small school versus a big school, as well as uh, West Coast and East Coast, I thought added to my overall experience that I gained through college. So that's that's pretty insightful because very often students worry about three plus two or even parents question about, you know, what is this program? Why can't we just do four years of engineering or four years of economics? So that extra year perhaps uh, makes you experience new things, also reflect a lot more about your choices or even participate in many more 
pretty professional sort of activities. So while you were in CMC, what is it that you sort of pursued, which were connected to activities that were connected to economics or finance in some sense? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I was involved in a bunch of things at CMC. Um, so things that were directly related to economics uh, and finance were the Student Investment Fund, which is a student-run hedge fund on campus. Uh, when I was there, we managed $2.4 million. I think now we managed three, so I did that. Basically, the fund just is a lot, it's a long only fund and we buy US equities, so that was cool. Uh, I was also part of the Claremont Consulting Group. Uh, that's an on-campus revenue generating consulting firm. Uh, I actually uh, was a lead consultant there. I got to lead a project with Apollo, like the private equity firm, their Indian affiliate is called Aon. Um, so that was again, um, you know, great experience. So I think in terms of getting like professional experiences at Claremont, it was um, it was great. And then on top of that, I did uh, I was heavily involved in MUN. I did a lot of debate, uh, and then I was also on the lacrosse team. Fascinating. And lacrosse was absolutely new. I'm <laughs> I'm assuming. Yeah, no, I never played it before. Uh, so I I picked it up in college, uh, and then yeah, the three years I was at Claremont, I was in the team. Um, and yeah, it allowed me to try something new and be involved in a different way that I wasn't expecting. Going back to academics, though, and we'll come back to um, the extracurriculars in a bit. Economics at Claremont is the most popular major. There's gov and political science in some sense also very popular. Uh, what are the different tracks students choose and what was your track in economics? Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, so economics is for sure the most popular major and I think within that uh there are probably two tracks Not, nothing's defined but like one track is like the one i did which is where oh i guess the three tracks sorry so one track is the one i did where you kind of focus on finance and that's like the kind of economics you do which is what i did another very popular track is where you do economics but with a focus in accounting um so that's a, a track a bunch of students who want to like enter either you know auditing firms or accounting firms like the big four they do that and then um, the third track is like kind of the public policy aspect of economics, where you kind of focus on public policy, um, you know, macroeconomics, like if you want to work for the Fed or, you know, um, work for any like economic consulting firm, like the analysis group or Cornerstone. So I would say CMC specializes in those three tracks. And I think in terms of popularity, the finance one is probably the most popular. Absolutely. So what are the courses typically upperclassmen are expected to take and you finish that in three years? So other than just the gen ed requirements, intro, macro, intro, minor, yeah. Uh, you know. So yeah, there's, uh, yeah. So the gen ed requirements, like you said, uh, is principles of economics, uh, intermediate micro, intermediate macro, uh, uh, intro accounting, econometrics. So I think those five everyone needs to take to be an econ major. And then the ones that I did to specialize in finance, where I took corporate finance, I took mergers and uh, acquisitions, I took investments, uh, I took derivatives, and I took financial statement analysis. So Claremont is also very well known for its uh, finance research. There are professors who are doing fairly yeah. good uh, work there. What are the opportunities that students, or if yeah. you had any other than the finance investment club? Yeah. Yeah, so we actually have something called the FEI, which is our Finance uh, and Economics Research Institute. Um, and they hire students um, to be, you know, uh, research assistants to professors and help them with their research. So I actually applied for a scholarship called the Bill and Melinda Gates Investments Fellowship. Um, and basically, you have to pitch a stock um, to um, Bill and Melinda Gates in Investments, which is run by a CMC alum. He's a CEO. You pitch a stock to him, you like, you know, uh, send him a couple of essays on why you like investing and obviously why that stock. And then also, you know, give them your resume and transcript. And they pick, uh, I think, four students every year. And these four students get a $15,000 merit scholarship as well as a $5,000 research grant. So as a part of the $5,000 research grant, I was automatically hired by the FEI. And I did a uh, research with uh, Professor Angela Vossmeyer, who's another she's a professor at cmc regarding the um great depression and you know factors um banking factors that helped uh, cause it interesting so you're talking about that uh, uh, professor's work and now we're living in a world which is uh, facing a pandemic and we, we don't know what it's called probably the great lockdown or something yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah just switching gears since uh, what do you think where the world is in terms of financial health <laughs> 
Yeah, um, I mean, right now there's a lot of talk about the disparity that's emerging between the actual economic health and the stock market. Um, like the stock market is almost at its all time high. Um, maybe like the S&P, I think is like 100 points shy from it, uh, which is crazy given that unemployment is almost at its all time high. And so, and like, you know, consumer spending is almost at its all time low. So like these uh, factors that traditionally would reflect a very poor stock market are not really doing so. So um, people are confused as to why this is the case. Um, so that's interesting. And then on top of that, what's been really interesting is like, the power you're seeing with these reserve banks, such as like the Federal Reserve, which are just injecting so much money into the American economy and just not letting it fail. So um, I think this is definitely interesting. And um, I guess <laughs> yeah. We'll see. yeah, we'll see actually, it'll all pan out in a few months or years. Uh, and we'll probably have a better conversation about uh, what this is called. <laughs> it's got a great yeah. depression or something else. Uh, fine, uh, talking more about operations research at Columbia and also moving to Columbia. It's a very different environment and you've uh, been at a sheltered, beautiful yeah. campus and now you're in, in New York. Uh, what was it like academically for you to adapt and also adapt socially to the new setting? Yeah, I mean, I think there are a couple of ups and downs. So one up was that I came into Columbia a lot older and a lot more confident in myself. So I started Columbia as a junior and I was 21 at the time. So I think that really helped in terms of like settling into the city and just like knowing what I wanted and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of um, kind of uh, getting into the social scene at Columbia, uh, coming in as a transfer, especially, you know, junior year, you 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 know establish all your friends back at CMC. I think that was definitely difficult, but I got lucky in the sense that because I'm an international student and you know I had friends um, both from India as well as Singapore, so I had a good base in New York and a good base at Columbia. So I think that really helped me in terms of uh, settling in. Uh, academically, I think um, for me it was also, I don't wanna say a challenge, but because I've been focused so much in economics, like shifting gears to engineering was definitely you know difficult. It wasn't easy, but again, I think I managed. Uh, so for example, going back to the activities portion of Columbia, I will, I got into the Columbia debate team as well as a business fraternity there called AKSI. And unlike at CMC, I think in Columbia, it's common to not be involved in more than two things because it's just such a big place while at CMC, everyone's doing like six, seven things. Uh, so, you know, those two things kept me occupied and helped me make a good uh, base of friends. And then, you know, academically, like, yes, engineering was obviously a different beast than economics, but I think that um, through the prerequisites I'd taken at CMC, I was prepared to deal with it. And also, you know, just being older, I think, allowed me to deal with it a lot better. Had that not been the case. Sure. Uh, what is an operations research major entail? You know, and where do, where, do, where do you take it from here? Or typically, what do students do after graduating yeah. with an OR major? For sure. So OR is under the um, like department of IUR, which is Industrial Engineering and Operations Research. And um, all of them are very similar. I guess OR is a bit more theoretical than industrial engineering. So I would think of OR as the physics to uh, the mechanical engineering. So like if physics is to mechanical engineering, OR is to industrial engineering. Uh, what essentially it is, it's about optimization of different systems. So that could be the optimization of like the supply chain of a factory. It could be the optimization of stocks in a stock portfolio. So you're just looking at different computer science and mathematical methods to make any system um, just more optimal. And that's what you essentially study. So in terms of uh, where this is used, is that um, like any kind of, I mean, the thing is uh, with this is that it's a very broad major in the sense it can be applied anywhere. So like I said, you can go into finance and, you know, be a trader and think about like what stocks will best like um, optimize for like lowering my risk. You could go into, you could work for Amazon and look at your supply chain and see like, what's the best way to get my product to the consumer, you know, things like that. So I think the good thing about OR is that it's literally applicable in all fields. And because data is getting so important, a big part of our major is also looking at how we can best cut the data to make these optimizations. So I think it's very useful and practical in today's world. Fantastic. So if uh, you were to uh, look at where you're headed next, uh, tell us a bit about your next job and things yeah. you're planning to do. So I'm going into investment banking after I graduate. 
Uh, in particular, I'm going to be working uh, at the restructuring group at Perella Weinberg Partners. So restructuring is an arm of uh, investment banking that deals with uh, bankrupt and distressed companies. So um, right now, for example, is a good time to be a restructuring banker because so many companies are going bankrupt. So there's a lot of demand for investment banks to come in and help, um, you know, get help these companies through bankruptcy and then eventually help them get out of it. So that's uh, what I'd be doing. The reason for that is um, like, I think between engineering and, and finance, I think, you know, my interests still lay more in finance and that's why I want to pursue it. Um, but the fact I think is that, you know, restructuring is definitely the most technical part of investment banking. So I think over there, my operations uh, major and like that mathematical side of thinking in my brain comes in and will help me hopefully advance in my career. Fantastic. I think it'll be so much fun to follow <laughs> what the world is going through. Unfortunate times for many companies, but I'm sure there are ways out of this mess. Uh, and the work that you might be doing could be useful to many such uh, organizations. Switching gears, uh, that's, this is pretty much the final part of our uh, session. Uh, it's rapid fire. So <laughs> number one, the first question is, what are the three words that come to mind that describe your strengths that you think capture your strengths? Oh, uh, three words that describe my, uh, I think I'm charismatic, uh, genuine, and um, uh, hardworking. OK, great. Next one. If you were to look at this lockdown and COVID era, what are the two or three changes that you made or you wish to make <laughs> in the way you are, the way you do things for yourself, for your health, for your mental health, and all of that? Yeah, I, I think one big change that I want to do is kind of uh, like through like uh, the COVID situation has made me like really understand the um, kind of privilege I have of you know like the fact that like my job has wasn't taken away from me you know that it's still there I'm still starting on time uh, and just you know value that a little bit more uh, and the fact that you know I wasn't impacted as much as I know so many people are financially and also health wise so I think you know just um, being cognizant of your privilege and you know recognizing that you have it and then hopefully utilizing that for something good is definitely one thing that I'll take away from this. And uh, number two thing is just, again, valuing of like um, my relationships that I think have helped me, you know, deal with this time. Like in the sense, like, you know, I think a lot of people's mental health has definitely suffered by not seeing people and stuff. So I think the fact that we have all these technologies like the one we're on to be able to connect with people and you know, the people that have been with you through this time, I think is very valuable and to treasure those friendships and relationships. Wonderful. I think there's so much to uh, learn from what you've shared. And I think the first part of just being uh, cognizant of the privilege that we have and perhaps make a difference in some little way, possibly. Uh, that's a suggestion which uh, resonates well. Finally, uh, Samar, if you were to give some life advice to students who are dealing with uncertainty, kids, uh, in our group, kids are supposed to go to college this year, but they don't know if colleges will have classes in person. Many are thinking of deferring. Uh, and even the kids who lost their jobs or internships in the two, three, four years of college. What is it that you faced in life which has been not a failure, but kind of bordering uncertainty? And how did you sort of cope with it? Yeah, so I think. Um like three kind of failures slash boring uncertainties for me. Uh, it's funny, I was actually writing this in an application, so that's why they come to mind. Uh, one was that, uh, so I didn't, like I said, I didn't get into the MNT program at Wharton, uh, which is what I really wanted to do, um, because you know that, like I said, was three, two, but in four years. Uh, so that was one. Uh, the second one was um, for my, um, um, I wanted to do, restructuring um essentially but my first internship in banking was at a small middle market investment bank called lincoln international doing m a and i just couldn't get a restructuring job and then the third one was i wanted to be in new york but my second internship in banking was luckily in restructuring but this time in la and i wanted to be in new york so those were three things that like didn't work out for me at the time so the way i dealt with um you know the pen rejection was essentially to find another way to like substitute 
um, that and find another program that does that. And I think 3.2 landed itself well over there. And looking back, I think it was way more beneficial than the MNT program would have been just because I think I did need that extra time uh, to, you know, think about what I wanted to do and why I wanted to do it. That's one. Uh, then when I didn't get into the m and intern, uh, the restructuring internship and got an M&A one, again, that just gave me motivation to recruit harder and better um, the next time. And then I did end up getting a restructuring internship. And then finally, my l last internship, which was at Holohan Loki's restructuring group in LA, I really wanted to be in New York. And I think um, that was a big thing for me just because I love the city. So that's another thing that I kind of put all my focus in and then got here. So I think Failures are just a part of life and a lot of times it doesn't work out. But I think what they do do is they allow you, like I think if I would have gotten these things without trying, I wouldn't have developed as a person. And luckily I did get them. Uh, so I think, you know, if you fail at something, just the idea is just don't give up and try again later. And this time, you know, obviously learn from your mistakes and recognize what you didn't do last time. And that kind of mentality has worked out for me in these three things. And I think it will for you as well. Wonderful, Samad. So thank you for your time. It's been uh, great to hear um, your articulation on so many subjects um, and, look, and look forward to reconnecting again. We will be organizing a few webinars in the next few weeks, months, and uh, we'll kind of do a mashup where we'll get a iBank uh, <laughs> enthusiast to even uh, maybe mash up with an actor. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we course. have students who are uh, doing very interesting things. So I'll let you know. Uh, thanks again. And we'll be yeah. in touch. Of course. Thank you, Arjun.